Hello there, everybody. This is Data Pioneer from the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and thank you for watching today. And uh, today I got a treat for you. I'm actually going to walk you through the process of installing a NextCloud uh, personal cloud application software, which is open source. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that in a virtual machine. We're going to be using Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, uh, latest edition, in order to do that. Uh, and it's going to be the host for our next cloud application. And that, that host is going to be running in a virtual machine for which I am going to be uh, setting up 100 gigabytes of VDI space. So what we're going to be able to do here in this demonstration is we're going to, or I'm going to rather, to show you how to go through the process step by step of setting up that personal cloud, creating a virtual server, if you will, Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, and then installing NextCloud, which is going to be the application that actually hosts your files and folders. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, it's going to be a self-contained um, uh, personal cloud, however. It's not going to be open face to the Internet, uh, and I will explain later in the video why. Um, for this demonstration, I'm going to keep it self-contained within the LAN, and that's quite all right because, you know, you, you can save files and and folders between users, um, you know, on your local area network. It doesn't have to get out on the cloud. You don't necessarily have to uh, go outside the LAN to access those files, although it would be great to do that. Um, here's the website that I'm on right now, and this is the nextcloud.com website. Uh, it says protecting your data, the self-host productivity platform that keeps you in control, and you can actually get NextCloud by clicking this button here, but I'm going to show you how to go about doing it within Ubuntu 18.04 LTS and setting that up rather than getting it and downloading it from the web itself. While we're on the website, though, I want to show you that uh, there are some things under products like NextCloud Files, NextCloud Talk, Groupware, At Home, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, how to collaborate online office. Here's some support information. FAQ is available there, pricing. There's the App Store if you want to get NextCloud for your iPhone or your Android. Uh, here's some white papers and documentation on uh, NextCloud and uh, some migration information. Here's the community information that's available, um, code of conduct, uh, security information, and here's the About Us, the blog, security, the team, the partners, events, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then there's some more information here on NextCloud. There's even a demo here you can click on. It shows you what NextCloud can do uh, in a demonstration uh, on the website itself. And then there's some information about GDPR as well. Okay, so let's uh, get into this. Um, as I promised, so we're going to uh, go through this step by step. You will be able to follow this video, and at the end, you'll be able to set up your own personal cloud in a virtual machine on your local area network and uh, set that up so you can share files and folders with members of your family and other people inside your own LAN. And so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm looking forward to it. Come along. Okay, so I'm in my uh, virtual box 6.0 application. Let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to go ahead and click Machine and New. And I'm just going to call this thing the Next Cloud, Personal Cloud. And I'm going to give this application, um, set it up under Linux first. Let me do that. Give it 4096 megabytes or 4 gigs of RAM to do the standard uh, application. Let me go ahead and cl click Create and give it 100 gigabytes of VDI space, uh, dynamic, and click Create. All right, so let's go up to Settings and click on the Settings. And then come down to uh, System here and check this out here. Uh, let's untick floppy and select hard drive or hard disk and move it up. So then we reboot, it goes to the hard disk. Let's get, click Display, give it 128 megabytes of uh, memory, and then select the uh, VBox VGA adapter. Click Storage, click on the button there, click on the uh, optical drive. And go out to my uh, F drive ISOs folder and select Ubuntu 18.04.3 that I downloaded from the web. 
And then we don't really need audio, but I'm going to select it anyway. And then uh, um, let's go ahead and select uh, adapter for um, networking and then USB 3.0. And we're done. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. And um, I'm going to go ahead and set the view as I normally do uh, for full screen so we get the uh, black background. And let's go ahead and get into setting up Ubuntu 18.04.3. This is going to be the server platform that we use. Even though it is a desktop, I'm going to use it as a server. Uh, virtual machine uh, of 18.04.3 of Ubuntu for our Nextcloud application that's going to be running uh, on Ubuntu 18.04.3. All right, so it's booting up now to the uh, installation. And when it comes up, uh, we'll get into it. Okay, should be coming up momentarily. All right, so we're um, on the platform now. Here's the installer. You can either install Ubuntu or try. I'm going to go ahead and install it. So I'm going to click Install Ubuntu. And we've got English keyboard layout. That's good. Click Continue. All right, for, uh, we're going to use normal installation. We're going to download updates while we're installing. Click Continue. And we're going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. This is a virtual machine, so I'm not going to do any partitioning here. So click Install. And then the final warning, let's click Continue and start the process. Should come up to ask us for time zone, I believe. Yeah, um, so New York time zone here, click Continue. Go ahead and set up my name. So it's uh, Dan Calloway. The computer name, I'm going to just tell it Ubuntu, uh, probably 18.04, and VM. And Data Pioneer is going to be the username that I select here. I'm going to go ahead and give it a password and repeat that password. Confirm it. Got a check mark. That's good. Let's click Continue. All right, so it's started the copy process. This is going to take a while. So I'm going to stop the video and come back when it's completed. All right, so it's uh, it's completed an installation, and so let's go ahead and click Restart Now to restart the server. And it's asking me to hit Enter, remove the media. I've already done that. It should boot up on the hard drive. I'll just hit the Enter key on the keyboard and the restart process is taking place. So now it's going to restart. Hopefully we'll come up to 1920 by 1080 uh, full screen resolution on my widescreen monitor. I've got a 1080p monitor here. All right, so it's booting up now to Ubuntu. Now this is in preparation for setting up Nextcloud uh, on the system here. We have to have uh, Ubuntu 18.04.3 uh, set up first, obviously, before we can set up our Nextcloud application for sharing files and folders. Nextcloud is really a great product, by the way. I, I like it. All right, so it's got my name here. Let me go ahead and click on it. And let me put in my password. And let me go ahead. It should be booting up now, logging me in, rather. Takes a few seconds to uh, come up. Okay, so here we are. Um, we are on the Ubuntu 18.04.3 platform. And let's go ahead and click Next here and bypass the uh, video intro here. Click Done. All right, so let's uh, right click and open the terminal. And let me expand the terminal a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. 
And um, let me bring it up. Hopefully, there we go. That should be good enough. All right, the first thing I want to do here now is I want to update the system. Uh, but let's uh, let's do a sudo. I'm going to add a user first before I do anything. So sudo add user jdo. And so password for Data Pioneer, put that in. It's, going, it's adding the user here. So let's uh, select a Unix password for that user. Let's uh, put in another, let's repeat it rather. It's just password is what I'm using. Full name here is Jane Doe. And I don't need room number, work phone, home phone, other, anything like that. So I'm just going to hit enter each time. Is the information correct? I'm just going to say yes. I could hit enter because it'll select the first option. Now let's do a sudo user mod dash little a capital G, which adds an auxiliary group. And we're going to give sudo group um, to that user jdo. All right, so that way they'll be able to use sudo. All right, we're going to clear the screen. And now uh, let's go ahead and update the system. So sudo apt update. And so it's going out now and fetching all the uh, updates that it needs to update the system. This is very important because you want uh, your operating system to be as secure as possible. Uh, and updating the system is the way to, to handle that. This is in preparation for NextCloud installation. All right, so it's reading the package list now. And... Um, it's building the dependency tree. It's got 149 packages. Let's go ahead and issue another command. sudo apt uh, dist dash upgrade. And go ahead and hit the enter key. And now let us do its upgrade. Let's say continue. Yes. And this is going to take a while. And so I will stop the video at some point and uh, come back when it's completed. Okay, uh, I'm back and we have restarted. I've restarted the system. I'm back in Ubuntu 18.04.3 LTS and um, on the desktop here. And the first thing we need to do, let's do a right click and open the terminal. Uh, let me expand this out a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. And um, first thing I need to do here is I need to look at the host name that we have. I need to change that for our next cloud installation, and I'm setting that up for that. So let me do a sudo um, nano uh, Etsy hostname and enter the password. And I can see that my hostname is set to what I had initially. I'm going to go ahead and change that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up uh, a domain, um, it's not going to be a secure domain. As I said, I'm going to keep this contained on the LAN. It's not going to be uh, internet facing. And so I'm not concerned about the security at this point uh, beyond just the, the local LAN, which is protected by my router. So I'm going to call it NC, which is for next cloud, and then my domain for my router, which is dot .com. Dot com. So it's nc.landlocal.asyscom.com. I'm going to hit Control X and Yes to save the file. All right. And then the next thing I want to do is issue a sudo uh, apt, or I'm sorry, sudo nano uh, se hosts. Okay. And then come down. I want to leave the local host for 127.0.0.1 alone. And come down to 127.0.1.1 and change that here to be identical to what I just changed in the Etsy hostname file, which is nc.landlocal.asyscom.com. All right. So 127.0.1.1 will be changed to the same fully qualified domain name that I set for the hostname. All right, let's do a Control-X here. 
and save this file and get back to the uh, terminal. Now what I need to do is reboot this in order to uh, make sure that it took. So let me do that, sudo reboot. And let's reboot the system. Uh, and it shouldn't take very long to reboot this. And then we should notice the change um, on the prompt when we get in. All right. After we reboot the system, the next thing we want to do is go out on the web to the next cloud website uh, to download and install the uh, server for next cloud. And we'll do that uh, when this reboots here. Now, as you recall, I, I set up a JDO account as well as my own, so you'll see two accounts when we boot up here. All right, so Jane Doe is here, and here I am. I'm going to go ahead and click that and log in. And um, I will need to get on the web uh, because I have a an account um, at in linuxveritas.com where I have this particular uh, blog uh, entry for artic or article for this entire installation um, which has some files in there so we'll need to copy later so let me go ahead and get on the web and let's bring it up to full screen and there is the article that I have, and you can see this This is the full setup uh, where the next step is to download NextCloud from this address, okay? And so let me uh, minimize this momentarily, and let me right-click on the terminal and bring that up uh, so that you can see that uh, we have NC now, all right, which is the host name. Uh, and so that means it took, it worked fine. So let's go ahead and clear the screen and let me go back to the web. And let's uh, look at what we need to do next. All right, so the next step is to download NextCloud. And let me click on this link here since it's available to me. And let's go out and go to NextCloud and I'll proceed from here to our next step. All right, so what we need to do now is to get the application. We can download for server. Well, let's go ahead and click that button. And it brings up this page here. Now, I can go ahead and click this and download the next cloud and, and do it that way. But I'm going to do it differently because I want to show you how to do it within Ubuntu 18.04. So let's right-click and let's copy that link location here. All right. And then let's go back out on to our um, terminal. And let's issue this command to uh, uh, grab the file that we need to set this up, okay? And so let's do a sudo wget, and then I'm going to do a control shift v and paste that in. So we're going to download this file, and then we're going to uh, later unzip it and uh, install it. So let's go ahead and grab the file, and let me do put in my password. All right, so it's installing, or it's downloading, rather, nextcloud.zip. Okay, so we've downloaded nextcloud.zip, and um, the next thing we'll need to do here uh, is let's set up the, um, the database server that we need to set up for our installation, which is the MariaDB server. Now, to do that, what I'm going to do is issue the command sudo apt uh, install MariaDB because it does run on a MariaDB server. All right, and you can follow along with me. You can pause the video wherever you need to if I'm going too fast. And let's go ahead and install that. All right, so it's uh, asking me, do you want to install it? Now I can hit enter here and it will take the first option, which is yes, or I can hit Y and enter. So it's installing the MariaDB server now. This is going to take a few seconds to do. And then once we get it installed, we're going to secure that server. Now, there are two things that we need.
to have a successful NextCloud installation. That's a MariaDB server and also an Apache server, and we'll be installing Apache here in a moment. And that's the web server. MariaDB is the database server. Uh, NextCloud does run on a database. I'm almost done. Okay, so it's done. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. And the next thing we need to do is secure that server. And so I'm going to issue sudo uh, mysql underscore secure underscore installation. You now you may be asking yourself, why am I issuing a MySQL and not a MariaDB? Well, MySQL, this is the command, MySQL underscore secure underscore installation. The commands are very similar, and so it'll work in this instance, and so I'm not going to worry about it. And let's go ahead and hit Enter. And it's asking us for the current password for root. Now, we do not have a password for root currently, so I'm going to go ahead and just say Enter here for none says it's okay, successfully used the password, moving on. Uh, it's asking me to set up a root password, and I'm going to go ahead and just give it a simple password of password here. You don't want to do that. You want to set up something differently, but I want to just go ahead and give it uh, a regular password here. So set up password, yes. The new password is going to be the word password. And re-enter it. All right. says it was successful. Now it's asking me, do I want to remove the anonymous users? Yes, I do. You do not want anonymous users or an anonymous entity logging into your MariaDB server. So I'm going to say yes here. Uh, normally, root should only be allowed to connect to the local host. Do you want to disallow root login remotely? Absolutely. So I'm going to say yes here. Uh, do we want to remove the test database and, and access to that database? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's hit enter. And now, do we want to reload the privileges for the table? Yes, we do. So let's go ahead and do that. So it says, thanks for using MariaDB. And so we've, we've completed that. Now, we need to get back into the MariaDB server. So let's go clear the screen. And let's issue the command sudo MariaDB. All right, and enter. All right, and so we're now in the MariaDB server. And we're going to have to uh, issue a series of commands here to create the database that we're going to use for NextCloud. And so the com first command we need to enter here is create. And I'm doing this in all uppercase since that's the convention. Create database. Uh, and then NextCloud is the name of the database we're going to be using. And we're going to end that with a semicolon. All right, so it's create database Next cloud is the database name, semicolon. All right, so it did create that successfully. Now we're going to look, go ahead and confirm that it did create it. So we're going to do show uh, databases, semicolon. And let's take a look at that. And sure enough, we have next cloud here as a database that was created. All right, so the next command we need to, to create, and this is critical, uh, so follow this uh, very carefully, if you would. I want to create uh, all privileges for NextCloud, the database, to a particular user. And so let's go ahead and grant all privileges on NextCloud, all right, dot star, which means NextCloud in any subdirectories, uh, to... Uh, uh, next cloud is the user at, and this is uh, important, localhost. Okay, and the quotes have to go around it. So next cloud at localhost, separately quoted, identified by, and then here is another critical portion. This is the password you're going to be using. Uh, for that particular database. So NextCloud is the uh, user getting into the NextCloud database. And then the password, I'm just going to, again, once again, I'm going to use, use a simple password, the word password. All right. And then enter, I mean, the quote, single quote here. And then follow that with a semicolon. And that was successful. So we granted all privileges on the NextCloud database to a user called NextCloud at localhost, 
identified by the password password. Okay. And now we're going to flush all the privileges. And let's go ahead and enter that with a semicolon, end that with a semicolon rather. Let's flush those. And then now we're going to do a control D to get out of the database. All right, so it says bye, we're out of it. All right, so the next thing we need to do, let's go ahead and clear the screen. We're going to go back here um, to the cloud and to my account, uh, my blog. We have to install required packages for PHP because PHP is a critical part of this. And so here, rather than type all of this in, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that into the terminal. And you can stop the video here and uh, copy and paste this as well if you like. Uh, and so let me go ahead and do a control shift V uh, to enter that. And so here is uh, the series of PHP packages that we need to install. Now, one of the things we'll need to check is we'll need to make sure that Apache gets installed in this process. All right, so let me go ahead and hit enter. And this is the following packages will be installed. And we notice that Apache 2 is one of those. And so that's good. And so we will get Apache installed. We will confirm that Apache is running, however. All right, so let's go ahead and hit enter and go ahead and install those. And this is going to take a few seconds to complete. And once that's complete, we're going to confirm that Apache is running and that MariaDB is running as well. And I'll show you how to do that. If you follow all my steps here, you shouldn't have any issues with setting up a successful NextCloud. In this case, it's on a virtual server uh, running in VBox uh, with a 100 megabyte, a 100 gigabyte rather, uh, storage uh, hard drive. And so you'll be able to use that particular virtual server uh, as the next cloud server. All right, so we're done here. Let me clear the screen and let me issue a couple of commands to confirm that we've got some a working Apache web server and a working uh, MariaDB database server as well. First one is system CTL status Apache Two, and we can see that Apache is running, very active and running, and that is enabled, which means that will survive a reboot. That's important. If that weren't the case, we would need to enable it, uh, and or we would need to restart the server. But since that's in place, we don't need to do anything here. Let's look at the MariaDB server system CTL status. Actually, I could have just done an up arrow here think. Yeah. And let's do MariaDB uh, server as well. And so we see we have an active and running MariaDB server and it is enabled as well. So there's nothing required here for us to do at this point. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to issue uh, some commands here to organize the Apache files. But before we do that, we need to um, restart the server. So let me do a system CTL uh, restart Apache 2, just to make sure. This, I don't think this is absolutely necessary, but I like to restart the server anyway. All right, and so we have successfully restarted the Apache server. Now let's go back to, uh, we're at PWD, we're here. Let's look at the local listing. Now, this was the, um, the zip file we downloaded from the website for NextCloud. We'll need to unzip that, okay? So let's go ahead and run an sudo uh, unzip uh, nextcloud.zip file, and that's the version we're running here is 17.0.0. Uh, your version may be different. Uh, so whatever that version happens to be, this is what needs to be in here. All right, and so let's go ahead and enter that, and let's unzip that. Okay, so let's clear the screen, and let's run a listing and see what we have. And you can see that we have a NextCloud directory right there, okay? 
and that's important that we get that. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to change the name of that, and we need to change it to match the NextCloud uh, fully qualified domain name that I'm using here, which is nc.landlocal.asyscom.com. And so to do that, I need to issue a move uh, next cloud, all right, just tab, so next cloud folder, and then change its name to nc.landlocal.asyscom.com, all right. All right, so we've renamed it. Let's take a look at it and make sure it got renamed, and it did. So here's the name of that directory now, all right. Okay, so after we've done that, what we need to do next is we need to change the permissions on that particular directory so that Apache can work with it. And so let's issue a sudo um, chone command recursively on the directory. Uh, and we need to have www-data and www-data to be the owner and uh, the, the owner of the file and also the uh, group that belongs to, all right? And so www-data for owner and group owner, and then nc.landlocal. Uh, and landlocal dot um, asyscom. Sorry, my phone went off there. Dot com. It just uh, ended that, so I don't have to answer it. And uh, so after I get that command entered, let's go ahead and uh, enter that. And let's take a look at the listing. We can see that the next cloud, the nc.landlocal.asyscom.com, is owned by www-data and is also in the group, uh, group owner of www-data as well. So that's what we need. So let's go ahead and clear that. All right, and so now that we've done that, um, let's check to make sure that Apache is running. So I'm going to go back out here to the web, and, uh, well, actually, I need to, uh, first of all, see what our IP address is. Let's do an ifconfig, and all right, ifconfig is not installed, so I need to install that. So let's do a sudo apt install net tools and get that installed so I can run IF config. All right, so let's uh, clear the screen and run an IF config again. You can see that my IP address is 192.168.1.197. Let me clear the screen. Let's go back out on the web and let's go out here to 192.168.1. Dot 197, and you can see that we have an Apache Ubuntu default page, which means Apache web server is running, okay? So we've got that set up successfully. Let's go ahead and close that. Let's get back out to our terminal. And the next thing we need to do is we need to move this particular, let me do a listing again. Let's, we need to move this particular directory to the location for Apache to work with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue the command sudo uh, move nc.landlocal.asyscom.com, and I'm going to move that to var www, okay? Um, and so let's go ahead and issue that command. And so now let's go out and take a look at the listing uh, of uh, var www, and we can see that we have moved, successfully moved that nc.landlocal.asyscom.com directory uh, to var www, okay? All right, so the next thing I need to do here is look at the enabled sites um, for the Apache server, and so let's do an ls-l, uh, Etsy, Apache 2, and sites enabled. All right, and so we can see that we have 
one site enabled here, which is the 000-default.conf, okay, right here. All right, so what I need to do is I need to disable that. And so I want to run a command um, to disable it. So the command to disable it is sudo uh, a2 en, or a2 rather, d-i-s-s-i-t-e for disable site for Apache 2, and then 000, and I can hit the tab, complete that. So I'm going to be disabling using the sudo a2 disable site command for the triple zero dash default dot comp file. All right, and hit enter, and that disabled it. Now I need to reload, and so I'm going to do a system ctl uh, reload Apache 2. And let's go ahead and put in the password. And that enabled or reloaded rather Apache 2. So we've got that done. We've got that completed. Uh, the next thing we need to do, let me go back out to the web here to my account, to my uh, blog. We've done all of this now. And the next thing we need to do is we need to add an Apache virtual host for the next cloud. All right. And so since we disable that one, we're going to uh, set up a new one here. And it's going to contain the information in here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in. And so, in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this particular command. And let me right-click and copy it. Let me go back out to my terminal and clear the screen here. And let me do a Control-V, uh, Shift-V. And now we bring up the file here, which is brand new. It's the Etsy Apache 2 Sites Available. And I'm going to call it nc.landlocal.asyscom.com.conf. Okay? Let's go back out to the web, and let me copy this information that needs to go into that file. All right, and let me pull that up. Let me do it again because i got too much information here. All right, so let's copy all of this. And you can stop and uh, copy this yourself. Uh, stop my video and copy it. So, all right. I'll put the link to my blog, actually, I believe, below the video, so you can just copy it directly from here like I'm doing. That would probably be easier. All right, so let's do a Control-Shift-V and copy that information in there. And notice that in this file that I'm creating, which is the sites available, nclandlocal.asyscom.com.conf, we have my uh, location here where I'm loading the nc.landlocal.asyscom.com. We've got this in five different places. We've got it here. We have it here for server name. I've got it here for directory here. And then I've got it under the transfer log and then the error log. Okay, So whatever your uh, uh, directory is for this particular comp file, you'll need to change that in those five different places. All right. And so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and do a Control-X and yes, copy that and save the file. All right, so now we have that file created. We're going to go ahead and enable the site that we disabled the other one, so we're going to enable this one. So let's do a sudo uh, a2 insight. Okay, that's to enable the site. And then we're going to enable nc.landlocal.asus.com.com. All right, so let's just confirm that. sudo a2 enable site nc.landlocal.asyscom.com.conf. We need to make sure we have that .conf on the end of it. All right, and so let's hit enter. And it says to activate the new configuration, we need to run to reload the Apache 2 web server, which I will do now. System CTL, reload Apache Two, all right. Enter, and let's enter the password. And so we have it enabled. All right. Okay. So now we need to configure PHP. If you go back out here uh, to the web, we need to configure PHP, and we need to do a couple of things here. Uh, we need to run this command first, and so I'll go ahead and just uh, copy it. And then we need to look at several areas of this php.ini file. We need to change these things, and we'll take a look at that here momentarily. Let me go back out to my terminal, 
and let me right click and paste that in the terminal and so we're going to edit that file which is the edcphp and this version is 7.2 apache 2 php.ini all right so there's the file all right so the first thing we need to do is we need to look at the memory limit and change it to 512k or 512m rather megabytes and so the best way to do that is to do a control w and uh, do memory uh, size, I think it was, and uh, not memory size, it was memory limit, that's what it was. All right, so let's go back out. Let's do a control W, memory limit. All right, so the memory limit is currently set to 128 megs. We need to change that to 512. All right. Next thing we need to look at is upload max file size. All right. So let's go back out here. Do you upload max? I think that's enough to find it. Yep. Max file size. We need to change that to 200 megs instead of just 2 megs. This will be the maximum size of the file that we can upload to our next cloud server. All right. The next thing we need to do is change this max execution time. So let's go back out here. Control W max execution time. And let's change that to 360 seconds. And not just 30 seconds. All right. And then let's go back and the next thing we need to change is the post max size, okay, which is 200 megs. And so let's go to Control W, post max. I think that's enough to find it. Yep, max size. And we're going to change that away from 8 megs to 200 megs. All right. Let's go back out again. And next, the next thing we need to do is change the time zone. It's the last thing we need to change. And for me, I'm in America, New York time zone here. So date.time zone. All right, so let's do a control W, date dot time zone. All right, come down, and I need to make that set to America, New York. Okay, so we're done with this file now. So let's do a control X and yes, save the file. All right, so we've saved that file, and now the next thing we need to do is we need to um, enable some required Apache mods, uh, which are modules, all right? And so I'm just going to go ahead. They're out here. They're listed on the, on the website. And so here are the ones that we need to enable. The first one we need to enable is the sudo a2 nmod rewrite. So let me do that. sudo a2 enable module rewrite okay, so let me make sure that's correct sudo a2 nmod rewrite okay we have that sudo a2 nmod rewrite and so let's go ahead and hit enter and it says enabling it and it's asking us to go ahead and uh, run systemctl restart I'm not going to wait and do that at the very end okay and so the next one we need to do is uh, we need to enable headers so let's go ahead and replace rewrite with headers. All right, get the same warning here, not warning, but notice to go ahead and restart. We're not going to do that just yet. All right, so let's next do the next one here. So let's replace headers with the next command we need to issue, which is env for environment. It says it's already the module env is already enabled. That's good. All right, let's replace env now with dir. That's already enabled as well. All right, so let's replace DIR with the next one, which is MIME. And it's enabled as well. And now let's replace MIME with uh, SSL. Although I'm not going to use SSL, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway in case I do that in the future. All right, and then the next thing I need to do is do a system CTL restart Apache. That's the last one we needed to do. 
And so let's do a system CTL restart Apache 2. Okay. And um, all right. And so let's go ahead and issue that command. And I need to put in the password. All right, so we've restarted the Apache web server now, and we should be done. Uh, as I said earlier, I am not going to do an SSL certificate here, and so I'm just going to bypass that step, although it's in the blog uh, article, and it is something you can do if you're fa forward-facing to the Internet, and you do set up, uh, you do, it is required that you set up an A record for your DNS server. I'm not going to do that because it's going to be self-contained. I'm not concerned about the security at this point because it is self-contained and will not be accessed outside the LAN. So we should be good to go. We should be ready to test this out. And so let me go ahead and exit here and close that out. All right, so now the next thing we need to do is go out back out on the web and let's go to, uh, to the actual fully qualified domain name here for our next cloud server. So let's do a nextcloud.lanlocal.asyscom.com and we have pulled up the web page. That's good. Now it is not secure and we know that. All right, so that's not a problem. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create an admin account here. I'm just going to call it Data Pioneer. And I'm going to give it a password that I normally give it. Yep, need to back it up here. All right. Notice down here, uh, this is the data folder that we set up, which is the var www and the fully qualified domain name for the server, nc.landlocal.asyscom.com. And then data is the subfolder where everything's going to go. Okay. Now, the database name, remember, and this is important. You need to probably write that down. But if you've forgotten it, you can go back and uh, rerun my video to this point. But the database that we created was called NextCloud, or the database user, rather, was NextCloud. All right. The database password, remember, I told you it was going to be just simply password. Let me go ahead and re-enter it again. Can't type today. All right. And then the database name is Nextcloud as well. All right. So we've got Nextcloud is the user for the database. Password was the simple password we're using. If you're going to be doing this, I would highly recommend you not do just password, but some other password. And that was in the command we gave it when we uh, were setting up the privileges in the database, if you recall, uh, for MariaDB. Whatever password you gave it there, that's what you need to enter here. Nextcloud is the name of the um, um, database itself, okay? Uh, and then localhost. So if everything is working, let's come down here. We can click Finish Setup, and we should be able to get into our Nextcloud uh, application. So let's go ahead and click Finish and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Still working. And hopefully we'll get this set up. It's taking a few seconds to resolve here. I'm not sure why it's taking so long, but hopefully we've got this completed successfully. I may have a uh, problem with my internet. Not really sure. Okay. All right. It was successful. Look at that, guys. We are looking at our next cloud uh, server here, uh, running as a virtual machine in Ubuntu 18.04.3. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Everything worked out fine. Let me click the arrow over here. This is telling us a little bit of information about. Uh, 
NextCloud itself. Uh, let's click the arrow here. Uh, it's giving us some more information on it. Let me go ahead and click the final thing. It's telling us that we can download apps for this as well. Now, I didn't set up the forward-facing Internet uh, SSL, so I'm not going to do this, but you can do it if you do that as well. And let's uh, go ahead and start using NextCloud. Let's go and click that button. So here we are. This is NextCloud. Uh, here we've got the Files folder. Uh, here is the Activity, and here is the Gallery. All right, for NextCloud itself. Um, and so uh, there's the gallery. That's the only two things that are in there right now. Uh, let's go back on files. Let's go over here to um, look at what we have. This is the NextCloud uh, notifications. This is the uh, users. And then here is uh, our apps. Let's look at the apps that we have available to us. Uh, we have several. Okay, we've got uh, several applications that we have here that we can run. Uh, PDF Viewer is one of them. Um, and some other things, Share by Mail, Support, Text, Theming, Usage Survey. I'm not going to get a lot into this. It'll be a future video. I'll go into NextCloud on how to set everything up. I just wanted to show you how you can go about. Um, you would need to enable these, by the way go about setting up uh, NextCloud itself, okay? We have no contact set up right now. Uh, and so, anyway, this is uh, NextCloud. And um, if you click on Users, um, I can actually set up a user in here as well. And so let's click on New User. And I'm going to set up that Jane Doe user, so J Doe. Uh, and... Um, Display name is going to be Jane Doe. Right? Password is going to be just password. Email address, I'm just going to call it jdoe at uh, protonmail.com. Okay? And then the... Uh, Add user in the group, and I'm just going to add the group here as admin. All right. And then once I get that done, I'm going to click that check mark and save it. And authentication is required. And so let's do password. Uh, let me do the uh, my password. It's asking for my password. All right. So we've got Jane Doe set up now. Uh, it says an error has occurred, request to proceed. Um, I'll need to look at that later, but I, I think we've got it set up successfully anyway. But this is NextCloud, and um, as I said, I've got 100 gigabytes of uh, VDI or virtual uh, disk image space, a hard drive, virtual hard drive, if you will, set up in the virtual machine running in Ubuntu 18.04.3. Uh, and I can copy files, ship into this, and share files with other users that I set up here uh, as well. And um, uh, with any, you know, family members, whatever. Uh, but it's locally contained within the LAN, which is nc.landlocal.asyscom.com. Uh, I elected not to go outside the domain, um, outside the, the LAN, rather, to the Internet. So I cannot access this securely. Although I can do it, I can access it securely from outside the LAN. All right, so this has been a video on uh, setting up NextCloud uh, in a virtual machine, and in my case using VBox 6.0. If you have a regular machine that you have available sitting around, you know, that you can put 6 gigs of RAM in, um, you know, an iCore 3 or an i5 uh, Core Duo, whatever like that, if you have set up a pretty beefy machine, you can, uh, you can do the same installation that you uh, saw me do here in this video on that local machine as well. It doesn't have to be virtual, uh, and you'll have a next cloud server. So I hope this was helpful to you, and I'll set up the location in, down below the video um, so that you can follow um, you know, the links that I input into the terminal so you don't have to do a lot of typing. I'll also have a link out to the NextCloud website as well. 
And then if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to me. Uh, go ahead and hit that bell as well so you get notified every time I upload a uh, video. And like that, hit the uh, like button as well.